Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization 6 city-state guide, where today we're going to be taking a look at the religious city-states. So starting things off, we're going to be taking a look at the effects you get from putting envoys in these city-states, and just like with all of the other types of city-states, there are different effects in the base game and the expansion, so I'll cover both, and you get these effects at 1, 3, and 6 envoys, respectively. So, for both the base game and the expansions, once you get a single envoy in one of these religious city-states, you will receive plus two faith per turn in the capital. This actually can be quite good um, extremely early on, just because this can get you to the first pantheon quite nicely if you're able to get the first meet on a religious city-state. So, that can be an easy ticket towards getting, you know, an early Earth Goddess, an early God of the Forge, or something like that, if you happen to run into a religious city-state. So, if you're looking to do that, then early exp or, uh, early exploration can always be a good thing, because that two faith per turn can definitely be helpful. At three envoys, you will receive in the base game, plus two faith in every holy site, and in the expansions, plus two faith in every shrine. I think that both of these actually are quite good. Um, also, at six envoys, you will receive plus two faith in every holy site once again with the base game, and plus two faith in every temple with the expansion, so... I think really all uh, both of these effects in both the base game and the expansions are quite good because of the avenues for you to obtain a religious victory. So whenever you're going for a religious victory, the pretty much the only way to do it is to just spam religious units and then just mass convert cities to your religion. And you know, sometimes you might have to get gurus or things like that to help heal your religious units if you're having to do religious combat, but for the most part, the general strategy with religious victory is just to spam units, and to spam units, you literally just need straight up faith per turn to be able to purchase them. So by having this extra faith, it makes it so that you can actually accrue quite a bit of extra faith per turn um, through the multiple holy sites that you have and the multiple buildings in those holy sites. So if you're going for a religious victory, I would definitely recommend trying to get as many envoys in as many religious city-states as you can because these will stack up. So if you have six envoys in, you know, two religious city-states, um, then you will get two faith, or you actually will get four faith in every single temple because you get plus two from each. So if you're going for religious victory, definitely fill up those city-states with envoys. If you're not going for religious victory, I'd say maybe consider it if you're still going for a religion and you want to, you know, use a religion to kind of augment another victory type. But if you're not planning on doing that, there's very few reasons to actually put envoys into religious city-states. Um, the only other reason I could see is if you're going for a culture victory and you want to build uh, fewer holy sites but get more value out of those holy sites because for culture victory you do need faith for naturalists and rock bands. So if you want to have fewer holy sites built but get more value out of them, then you can use religious state, uh, religious city state envoys for that purpose. So now let's move on and go ahead and take a look at some of the suzerain bonuses for the religious city states in the game. So the first two that we're going to take a look at are Armagh and Jerusalem. So with Armagh, you're going to get a unique tile improvement known as the Monastery, and the Monastery will provide plus two faith per turn, uh, plus one housing, which later will rise to plus two with colonialism, uh, and you also will get plus one faith for every two adjacent districts, and religious units that are on the Monastery tiles will get plus 15 HP per turn healing. So the Monastery, I think, is... it's not really all that great. It can be nice if you're going for Religious Victory to get a little bit of extra faith per turn from it, but even so, two faith is not particularly good. If you're able to get at least three, you know, if, if, if you're able to put it next to two districts and get that three faith per turn, then it's kind of okay, but still not great. If you're able to get a plus four, then I think that's pretty alright. Um, so most of the time, I don't find myself utilizing the Monastery. If I'm not going for a uh, Religious Victory, I literally never use it because I don't think it's worth the tile space. Uh, Jerusalem makes it so that your holy sites will exert pressure as if they were holy cities, so that means that they will provide plus 4 pressure instead of plus 2. This still is incredibly underwhelming when compared to literally a single spread missionary charge, because as I talked about in my uh, religious video, or my religious victory in-depth video, the amount of influence that you get from a single spread mission or from a single missionary spread religion charge is plus 220 and if you think about it if you're getting you know plus four per turn from a city it's going to take you a lot of turns to even reach the effect of a single missionary charge so generally religious pressure is not that great and even if you get it doubled it's still pretty underwhelming the only case i would even consider using jerusalem is if you are combining jerusalem with the other uh, religion bonus that then doubles pressure again so in that case it kind of can actually start to be moderately impactful but even so i don't think that that uh that religion uh, belief is particularly good anyways so i would generally tend to stay clear from jerusalem as well 
Next up, we have Candy and Lavanta. So Candy's bonus makes it so that you receive a relic each time you discover a natural wonder, and you also get plus 50% faith from relics. So this actually can be fairly decent, depending on what Civ you're playing as well. People like uh, the Congo or Yadviga both very much like their relics. I believe also, um, oh man, I can't remember his name, Jai of Armin. Jai of Armin likes relics as well, so if you're playing any of those civs, then Candy actually can be a very nice civ because they all get some bonuses for their relics. Well, I don't know if Jai of Armin actually gets bonuses from the relics, but he likes to have relics. So if you're playing one of those civs, then relics can be very nice, and all you have to do to really get them is just explore around the map a little bit. So you can get some free relics, which give you some tourism and some faith per turn. So Candy is actually fairly good, and the fact that it gives you the plus 50% faith bonus as well for those relics can really help to get you a little bit more faith per turn as well, so candy in some situations actually can be fairly helpful. Uh, as far as Laventa is concerned, it makes it so that you can build the Colossal Head Tile improvements, which provide plus two faith, plus one faith for every two Rainforest or Woods Tiles. This uh, eventually changes to plus one or two for every one Rainforest or Woods Tiles. Um, and then something that's kind of unique is that these Colossal Heads actually provide tourism from faith at flight. So once you hit flight, you're going to get faith equal to the, or you're going to get tourism equal to the faith output of the Colossal Head. So the Colossal Head, I think, is slightly better than the Monastery, just because it is generally easier to get the extra faith from it, especially once you reach the point where you get one faith from every one Rainforest or Woods Tile. Then I think that you can actually get some fairly decent faith per turn uh, Colossal Heads down, which can actually be worth working. Once again, though, if you're not going for Religious Victory, I wouldn't even bother with the Colossal Head, because the tiles are pretty much unanimously going to be used for something better, like a mine or a farm, uh, rather, than, rather than a Colossal Head. But if you are going for Religious Victory, I sometimes do consider building the Colossal Heads, because they can actually eventually provide some decent faith per turn. And the last two religious city-states that we're going to look at are Nazca and Yerevan. So Nazca will provide you with the uh, the Nazca line unique tile improvement, which will provide one, which then rises to plus two faith to adjacent tiles. It will also provide plus one food to an adjacent desert tile, plus one production to adjacent flatland tiles, plus one appeal to all adjacent tiles, and the tile itself cannot be worked. So the Nazca lines are a very unique thing. They were added in Gathering Storm, and the big area where I find the Nazca lines to be really useful is if you are in a desert. So if you're playing someone like Saladin or, oh man, who else is a desert civ? Or Nubia or someone like that that, you know, tends to spawn in deserts or Mansa Musa and has a lot of desert tiles, the Nazca can be really good because you can strategically place the Nazca lines to really stack up the yields on a few desert tiles. So even if you're not going for Religious Victory, I would definitely consider utilizing Nazca. You see, the funny thing is Nazca, it's not always great for Religious Victory, but it actually still can be decent, because if you get two Nazca lines adjacent to a tile, that's going to be eventually plus four faith on that tile, plus some extra yields as well, which is fairly decent. So Nazca is a city-state that I think actually has some fairly decent bonuses, even if you're not going for Religious Victory. Yerevan will make it so that your apostles can choose from any possible promotion rather than just choosing from a random pool of three, and Yerevan for Religious Victory is probably the single best city-state in the game for Religious Victory because... I know I just said Religious Victory twice, but that's fine. Um, but for... <laughs> I almost just said it again. But the ability to be able to choose any possible promotion on the apostles is incredibly impactful because you can choose... Every single time, you can just choose the really good one. So you could choose either the one that, you know, removes 75% of the pressure from other civs every time you spread religion. You can make it so that you get triple spread in uh, in civilizations or in other civilizations, both of which are really good. The other nice, nice thing is that if you have moksha in a city, then you can make it so that all of your apostles appointed in that city get two charges, at which point you can, you know, make it so that you either get more uh, spread charges with triple strength. You can make it so that they have triple strength and they remove the influence from other religions. Religions, you can get some OP apostles that make it super easy to convert every single city to your religion. And with Yerevan, I think it's the single easiest way to win a religious victory. And if you're going for a religious victory, then I would highly recommend you keep Yerevan in the game. So speaking of keeping Yerevan in the game, we're now going to go ahead and talk about which city-states I generally like to keep in a game and which ones I generally like to kill. So for the ones that I like to keep, I a lot of the time we'll be willing to keep Nazca and Yerevan. If I'm not going for religious victory, then Yerevan 
isn't always that impactful, and I sometimes won't keep it, but for Religious Victory, it's a 100% keep every time. Um, same thing with Nazca. There are some situations where Nazca isn't that great, but for the most part, the extra yields that you can get on tiles from the Nazca lines are actually pretty helpful, and I would recommend that you utilize them in your games. For the city-states that I pretty much always kill, I pretty much always kill Armagh, Jerusalem, and Leventa, just because the unique tile improvements from uh, Armagh and Leventa are really kind of underwhelming. The yields that they provide are only really good if you're going for a religious victory or, you know, situationally if you're going for like a culture victory and you need a little bit of extra faith to buy naturalists and stuff, then they can be okay. But for the most part, I generally don't find them to be impactful enough for me to keep them around. And with Jerusalem, the, the religious pressure that you get from it is still so underwhelming that I'd rather just, you know, go Deus Vault and go send, on a, send out a crusade to go take the Holy Land. Um, and then obviously the one that isn't, uh, you know, grouped in with any of these groups here is Candy. And really with Candy, it varies. Sometimes if, you, if you're having a game where you feel like you could use Relics for either some religious tourism or you could use the Faith Return from it, or if you're playing one of those civs that really likes Relics, then Candy actually can be quite good. Um, but in other situations, I don't think that it is that useful. Like if you don't really need Relics for anything, then I would obviously go ahead and take Candy. Now let's go ahead and rank these city-states. So as I've mentioned in the other videos, it's a little bit difficult to rank the city-states just because there is a lot of situationality that is involved with them and how useful they are. So take this list with a little bit of a grain of salt. It's not 100% concrete and it definitely depends on the game as to how useful these civs or these city-states are. So if I had to uh, rank them though, this would be the list that I would put them in. So Yerevan I definitely think is a clear winner just because of how strong it is towards religious victory and Jerusalem just because of how poor religious just pressure is in the game I generally think is a pretty bad city-state. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.